Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today we'll discuss the notion of ratio versus a proportion. The next few next few videos will some will solve some problems dealing with these two notions, these two concepts, ratios and proportions. So let's begin by speak. Let's begin by talking about the difference between the two concepts. What exactly is the difference between a ratio and a proportion? Well, there are actually two differences, two very fundamental differences between what constitutes a ratio and what, what is counted as a proportion. Let's first take a look at the ratio. Ratios, ratios, deal with with like things. The ratios deal with like things, like as in similar things. Similar things. Things such as, for example, in a ratio we might talk about the ratio of boys to girls in the class. We might speak of ratio of boys to girls and if we are told that the ratio of boys to girls is 3 to 4 and if the problem goes on to tell us that there are 12 boys in the 12 girls in the class how many boys there must be then of course the boys will be three times as much as well there will be nine girls ratios deal with like things things that are similar for example we might talk about uh, red cars and blue cars in the parking lot the ratio of red cars to blue car in the parking lot we are told is say for example 2 to 7 and they might go on to say well if there are if there are 10 red cars, then how many how many blue cars must we have? Well, we must have twice as many blue cars. Uh, uh, sorry, not twice as many, five times as many blue cars. We, might, we must have 35 blue cars. Or, for example, we might talk about the ratio of daffodils to roses in a garden. Ratio of daffodils to roses. For example, if we are told the ratio is 5 to 2, and if they go on to tell us that there are, in fact, 35, 35 daffodils, how many roses must be? Well, there must be... 7 times 2, 14 roses. These are like things. Roses and daffodils, red cars and blue cars, boys and girls, they are like things. They are similar things. Why are they like things? Why are they, uh, why are they looked upon as similar things? Because they, these items, they can be added or subtracted. It will make perfect sense, it will make proper sense, it will make all the sense in the world to ask ourselves at the end of the questions. So if we have 9 boys and 12 girls, well how many kids are there in the, in the class altogether? We can add the two items, boys and girls. They are similar items, they are like items, therefore we can add them. Similarly, when we finish talking about the red cars and the blue cars in the parking lot, it will be quite natural to wonder how many total cars do we have? How many total flowers do we have? We have this many daffodils, we have this many roses, what's the total number of flowers we have? It, it's, perfect, it's perfectly normal to wonder what the total would be. We can add that these items, we can subtract these items. On the proportion, in the proportions on the other hand, let's take a look at the proportions now. In proportions, proportions deal with, with unlike things, things that are we have similar items here, things that are dissimilar, things that are dissimilar. These things we will see in a second cannot be added or subtracted because they are dissimilar. They constitute a proportion. For example, in a proportion we might wonder, uh, we might be told that uh, we might be told that one book costs three dollars. One book costs three dollars. Well, what will be the cost of three books? Or well, the cost of three books will be three times as much. We're dealing with books and dollars, books and dollars, or we might be told, we might be told that, we might be told that one gallon of gasoline, one gallon of gasoline gives us 30 miles. We can go 30 miles in one gallon of gasoline. The question is, how many, how many gallons of gasoline do I need to buy if I'm going to trip? I'm going to take a trip, which is going to be 270 miles. We can figure out the number of gas, gas uh, gallons that we need to purchase. In this case, of course, 9, because 30 times 9 is that amount. But the point here is they are dealing with gallon and miles. 
or we might talk about words words per minute if we are told that somebody can type 40 words per minute if we are told that a person can type 40 words per minute then it will be perfectly normal to ask ourselves how long will it take to type 800 words answer of course is it will take 20 minutes again the point here is that we are dealing with words and minutes here it would make no sense at all it would make no sense at all to ask ourselves how much is two books how much is two big book two books for plus 27 cents how much is two books plus 27 cents it would make no sense to ask ourselves that question or how much is three gallons three gallons plus five miles or for for that matter how much is five words plus two minutes this, this, these concepts are utterly nonsensical. We cannot go around adding books and cents, gallons and miles, words and minutes. It makes no sense. They cannot be added, they cannot be subtracted, and that's how we know that we are dealing with a proportion problem, not a ratio problem, because had we been dealing with the ratio problems, we would have been able to add the items at the end. So that's the first fundamental difference. That's the very first fundamental difference. There is one more difference equally important between ratio and proportion. And we'll discuss that. We'll discuss that concept now. Just give me one second. We'll discuss that concept now. So that was the first difference. Ratios deal with like things, proportions deal with unlike things. The second fundamental difference. The second fundamental difference is that ratios, ratios are always, always unit free. They are always unit free. They have no ratio. We talk about the ratio of boys to girls. It's just two to three. That's it. It has no units. It has no units because we have two, two people on the top and three people on the bottom here and they cancel out. We they talk about the ratio of red cars to blue cars. We may talk about the ratio of red cars to blue cars and the ratio may be 2 to 7 and then just it's just 2 to 7 because the two cars on the top, two cars on the top and two cars on the bottom, the units drop out. The ratios are always unit free. They are always unit free. By the way, before I completely forget it, since it's a, a thought occurs to my mind, I want to share with you. Ratios can be expressed in three different ways. There are three different acceptable ways of expressing a ratio. We can talk about the ratio of boys to girls, boys to girls. For example, as 2 to 3, or we can write it as 2 to 3, or we can write it as a fraction. These are all equal, perfectly acceptable ways of expressing a ratio. But that was just a bit of a digression here, a side note. 2 to 3, or we can actually write or write it out in words 2 to 3, or putting 2 dots there, or we can put it as a fraction, 2 to 3. Ratio of boys to girls is 2 to 3. Ratio of red cars to blue cars is 3 to 7, for example. Let's move on here. So what do we learn here? Ratios have to be unit free. Ratios have no unit. Proportions, on the other hand, oh, actually, I shouldn't have raised all the thing. We're going to need that. Proportions, on the other hand, proportions must, must have units. Must have units. A proportion without a unit is completely meaningless. It must have a unit. There is always going to be units. Units are going to be such as the one we saw here. Books per dollar. There you go. Those, those are, the, it has to have a unit. Or we may talk about gallons, gallons per, per number of miles per gallon is typically what we'll show here. Not gallons, how many gallons, how many, how many gallons we need to buy to go so many miles. Typically we talk about miles per gallons. How many miles I can go for a given amount of gasoline? Now well, we can talk about words per minute. Words, words per minute, and so on and so forth. It will always have a unit. A proportion without a unit is utterly useless. It is utterly meaningless. Quite opposite is true of the ratios. Ratio must always be unit free. There is no such thing as a ratio with a unit. It's just 2 to 3. Whatever it is, it's just ratio is 2 to 3. Starting from tomorrow, we'll begin to solve problems. We'll do first, in the beginning, first we'll do a few proportion problems, and then we'll do a few ratio problems. Okay? Bye now.